Roger Williams University is hosting a crisis management seminar on May 3rd at their Providence campus. Crises, whether a natural disaster, cyber attack, or financial instability, can have severe repercussions if not handled properly. This is where crisis management plays a pivotal role. Join Roger Williams' MBA students and expert speakers to learn how to prepare for the unexpected. The program is totally free and open to the public. You can register online at rwu.edu slash events slash crisis dash management dash symposium. This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. CCA Health Rhode Island, Commonwealth Care Alliance, or CCA, is a multi-state integrated care system influencing innovative models of complex care nationwide. CCA Health's Uncommon Care model focuses on sustainable and evidence-based healthcare breakthroughs that improve the health and well-being of people with significant needs and is consistently recognized as one of the best models in the country at identifying and serving traditionally hard-to-reach individuals. CCA is excited to bring Uncommon Care to Rhode Islanders with a range of Medicare Advantage plans. Learn more by visiting CommonwealthCareAlliance.org backslash Rhode Island. All right, so welcome into Inside Rhode Island Music on the Bartholomew Town Podcast presented by Elmwood Songwriters Club. Today we have a really special and really cool story that is um, I'm, I'm really excited to discuss. And joining us are three legends in Rhode Island in one way, shape, or form. Uh, Donald Torres. Kathleen Layton and Ian Campanano and Campo Piano. Campo Piano. Wow. I'm yeah. glad, I'm glad. Campo Piano. It is a tough one. It's a tough one. And and oftentimes I will ask, like, how do I pronounce your name? I just wanted to uh, see if I could win some bonus points right out of the gate. So clearly I'm not entitled to those points. And I apologize for mispronouncing your name right out of the gate. Happy I Monday. Say, you could say E and C. Yeah. Um, I, I like that. It's like me with Bill B. It's just sometimes the easier way to go. But getting down into uh, the weeds, of course, but let's let's talk about what is a really beautiful project that was created, the man, the myth, the legend, and what this project is. And I guess, Ian, let's start with you. You know, you're you're with the Trudeau Center. Talk about your work and talk about from your standpoint where this project came from. Um, so I've been working with Trudeau for uh, like almost 18 years now. And um, Donnie, I've, I've known Donnie for over a decade. He's always been into like creating music, into hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, and we've recorded songs in the past, um, you know, maybe 2010, 2011, like over, you know, a while, a while back. Um, but this time, um, you know, after the government shutdowns and all that stuff, and we got back to you know normal um he was like let's do a full i want to do a full length album so i said okay yep. and we we just started from scratch we wrote you know the first song went all the way to track 10 or whatever um and just you know went piecemeal just track by track and took about a year um he he's into different things so he'll come up with ideas um and i'll just kind of try to shape them um, almost like a producer would, I guess. Um, that's kind of the basics behind it. We, uh, we hang out um, mm -hmm. and we listen to music and do some basic stuff. And, mm -hmm. and making, making the record though is kind of like, it's more involved. Mm -hmm. So um, I really wanted to just put it out there. I, want, I wanted to make like, you know, make it look presentable put it out on CD, something he could give to his family mm -hmm. and friends and share. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe do another one. Just keep, oh, keep yeah. rolling with it. Keep it going. And there's something about making music or any creative project that it's, it becomes an extension of us, but it also, let's be honest about it. It can outlive us all. It will outlive us all in terms of what we understand to be life. And, mm -hmm you're kind of cementing a legacy. Donnie, are you, are you happy with the record? Oh yeah, I do. Well, that's a good sign because I can say as an artist, yeah. a lot of times yeah. you're like, am I happy with this? Or, you know, am I just glad it's done? So that's a really beautiful thing. You have an event coming up and I'll mention oh, yeah, it. Yep. 
the event is coming up this Friday and it's at the right. training center and yep. talk about the event, Ian, and, and what people can expect from that. Um, well, it's like a CD release party oh, yeah. um, and it's basically going to be a dance party. There's going to be a DJ. They're going to play the record. They're going to play um, probably like music that he likes, like Drake and Future and uh, some other guys too. Yeah, they oh, go yeah. all. Um, and there'll be, uh, I think there'll be pictures and snacks and it'll just oh, be yeah. a good place to get together, hang out and share in the experience of his record, The Man, The Myth, The Legend. Um, it's a great accomplishment. Um, and, uh, you know, it'd just be a great way to get everybody together to, to listen to it and have a good time, community, unity. Um, and, uh, you know, like you said, just creating is, is such an important piece. So I think it's just good to share it with everybody from the agency, the clients, everybody um, to just see, you know, potential where, where you could go. You know, you, you think there's a wall, but you can keep pushing and there's things you can do that you just have to focus on and uh, get through those barriers. So mm -hmm. is Definitely. Kathleen, you, you obviously this is on the surface. It doesn't take much to understand why this is a really amazing accomplishment and it's a really cool story in our community. But talk about it from the, the sort of framing of it as – I hate to use this word because it's sort of demeaning, but the pitch that you present – on why this is such a compelling story from your standpoint. Sure. Um, working at the Trudeau Center, I so often think this is the story of the year. This is the story of the year because working with people with disabilities um, will change your life and perhaps sometimes you may change their life. Um, this one, I am a big rock and roll fan, big local music fan big Donald fan. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Donald works at EB. Oh yeah. yeah. He works at EB. So that's oh, part yeah. of um, yep. his services here at the Trudeau center. Um, he gets workforce development and he works with Ian. So I see Donald most days when he comes back from EB, he, he works there in, um, oh, yeah. Yep. you help clean EB, right? Yeah, I can maintenance. And oh yeah. Things, maintenance. Things oh yeah. Yep. And he is the most popular person at EV. And I know that, right? On your birthday, what happens? The whole place is yeah. celebrating Donald's birthday. Um, so there's so many connections in the community. And um, I've been at Trudeau for four years and I can't believe there was a rock star in my midst and I didn't know. So somebody tells me about, and I am talking about Donald, but I'm also talking about Ian. Um, so like, I didn't know that. And then I remember, I remember the band. Um, so this is just a story that I have been sharing with everybody. Um, we do have a new leader here at the Trudeau Center, a new president and CEO. Um, his name is Dr. Al Barrio. So I, not only did I pitch it to media, I pitched the party. Um, and he said, great, no bar. That was the only thing I didn't get, which I understand. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so there'll be food, there'll be a DJ. We do oh, yeah, yeah. have recreational dances for our um, adult community with disabilities frequently. This will be like that, but much more. Um, and a cotton candy machine. Yeah. I don't know. About that. Hello. <laughs> so we're, we're here to party down and yep. Donald, um, we will have a DJ, so Donald will not be performing. He will be too busy partying, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but what the other thing I think is amazing is um, the production. Like, you, you may just want to, because when you explained how you produced the album, I was blown away. Yeah, I mean, it's, I would just basically, you know, make a hip hop type beat. I create, create the music, create the beat, you know, drum machines and whatnot. And then he would have, um, I would try to get like a theme from him. So we'd have oh, a theme. Yeah. Every track would have a theme. Oh, yeah. And yeah. he would say, you know, different things he was into. And I would just try to project into the room. So I would, I would crank the preamp. I would stand off to the side. And I would say certain phrases or certain words. And he would do the takes. And then we'd oh, go yeah. in. And I'd cut myself out. And then move it and slide it and get it like into a certain rhythm on certain beats and whatnot and try to create you know some type of verse chorus or just just some kind of um you know 
just a semblance to the, uh, right. the track. And, and the, the other thing is, it's really good. It's so good. And so it then opened me up to listening to more of Ian's work, which is also really good. So what a story, you know, one of many in the disability community. Um, and I find that not only are the people that we help so cool, but like I found the coolest people in the world and they're DSPs like Ian, like there are people that work with people with disabilities and I, I never meet one that I don't want to hang out with, you know, it's, it's true. Talk about the Trudeau Center for anybody who doesn't know either of you, you know, that, that you want to talk about. And then I got a question about it for, for Donald as well. What, what the type of work that you do, you're in Warwick, talk about, you know, what, what, what the center is and, you know, the, the, the just an overview. I mean, what I do, I mean, I, I work in community support for Trudeau. So I usually work one-on-one -on -one with clients, clients with disabilities, and I usually like to meet them where they're at and just push them into things that they like to do and just kind of wh wherever they're at, I try to push them, um, you know, with what, what they want to do, with their motivation, what they're into um, to, you know, accomplish things and, and make their lives better, um, easier, um, you know, with challenges, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, with, with what I do with Donnie, you know, um, yeah, you're enhancing his life, which yeah. is part of our mission. And there's all different departments, which are there's group homes, there's, yeah. there's uh, you know, HPT. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I can go through all the departments. Oh, uh, yeah, like, like so, there. yeah, like the Trudeau Center helps um, approximately a thousand Rhode Islanders typically from birth till death. So, meaning early intervention that can start as early as three months. Um, and then we go right into HBCS, home-based children's services. So um, um, uh, we have an ABA clinic, um, applied behavioral analysis is the um, is, is a program to help children with autism. So we're really- And then um, like the teenage and then, and then portion have, of CSS would be like a pass program. So, and then- when the when the people come adults, they move into like a community yeah. support or yeah, we really we really offer a continue uh, uh, we offer a continuity of care for people with disabilities from birth until end of life, mm -hmm. and that includes early intervention to pathways, our two schools that treat autistic children, um, and we've got group homes, which I spent a lot of time in, which is uh, we've got seven group homes in Warwick, Rhode Island that house adults with disabilities. Um, and I spent a lot of time there, loveliest place ever. And then we've got Donald, uh, an adult part of our community day services. MCDT. Yeah. MCDT. <laughs> and, and our mission is to promote an enhanced quality of life for individuals with disabilities. And that's what we do. And I always remind myself of the mission. So um, we're here to enhance our clients' lives. And that's what we do, whether it's through finding their art and working on it, to taking them to the library, to, you know, exercise, have, yeah. you know, anything, healthy eating, living skills, everything. Adults and children. So that's what makes us a little bit different sometimes. Some some just deal with some other nonprofits, it's just children, or some other nonprofits, it's adults. We do have um, the full scope. Donald, do you uh, do you love the Trudeau Center? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I can see how it would be a magical oh, yeah, yeah. experience because you're you're connecting with people who are willing to go yeah, that, those yeah, next steps. Yeah. That's really beautiful. And he also, uh, Donald is a swimmer. Um, we, we oh, at yeah. the Trudeau Center, we Just foster, much. we love, we foster um, Special Olympics. We have our own Special Olympics team. Um, and yeah. Donald, you are, you are a swimmer. Oh yeah, right? I'm a softball. Softball too. Oh, beautiful. What mm -hmm. position do you play in softball? Oh, everywhere. Everywhere? Utility. Nice. Utility player. I was gonna say the bit, the, 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 the most important player on the team, the utility player, right? Well, kind of, yeah. yeah. I'm always amazed by anybody whose life in, is devoted to helping other people 24-7. That's, that's what you guys do. How, what's the impact been on your life from the work you've done at Trudeau, Ian and, and Kathleen? Uh, for me, 
I mean, I just, I like, I like working with guys one-on-one, -on -one, helping them out. I like, um, I like the freedom in the, uh, like the schedule, you know, being a musician, being an artist, I have kind of weird hours and with, with kids and whatnot too. So I like the flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, and then it gives me, you know, a chance to like share my skills or, you know, my expertise or whatever with other people. And, you know, it's a win-win. Can I, you know, I went to school for social work and I went to Rick. I have a, I have a bachelor's in social work and I've just been in human services a long time. So whatever job I had over the last 18 years, I've always kept um, Trudeau. I've always been employed at Trudeau, um, no matter what I did. And I've always kept a relationship with different guys like Donnie and other people um, at the agency. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, it's, I think it's, yeah, it's life changing. It's got and, a family and it last, vibe. And it lasts, it lasts, Pat, you want to create memories that, you know, you want to create good memories that last, you know, a lifetime or go beyond that. Um, like you were saying, like leave something behind that's, you know, I don't want to say a legacy, but, you know, something, something that's concrete and great, you know, something positive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And for me, I mean, I've worked in communications in Rhode Island for my whole entire career. Um, so this would be my first nonprofit job. I worked in higher ed and newspapers before that. Loved those jobs. Um, at the Trudeau Center, there's never a lack of content to write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's almost always positive. Even last even last week, we had a death of a group home resident, a um, 69-year-old man who I'd met many, many times. Um, but and he died, and that's sad, and I got to write it about him. Um, but I know because I spent so much time in that group home that he had such a nice life. And that's made me feel good in that I've met people who have a child and, um, you know, at some point, maybe that child's going to be in a group home or be under di a different situation. And I like to be able to assure them that they're loving places and that um, we're taking great care of our people. And I'm sure so is everybody else, you know, that they're in good hands. Um, so that means a lot to me. And I think of it as um, it's such a fun job and I am not in every day working with people with disabilities. I certainly have lunch every day during the week with people with disabilities. Um, but I find that part of the job when I do take on a shift um, at a group home, I find it to be just so enriching. And uh, now I know what I'm going to do when I retire, because when I'm sick of writing all the time, I'm going to go work at a group home. Or I'm going to go work with Donald's, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know that that's, I found where I want to be amongst the people I want to spend time with Donald, like Donald. <laughs> so special. Do you feel that the general public from your standpoint, Kathleen, do you feel like the general public knows the type of work that goes on on a day in day out basis, year in year out basis in a, in an organization, an agency like Trudeau, or is that, does that story need to be told more? Is there still a gap right. between what people understand about your community as a whole? I think it's come a long way. I really do. Um, and I think that rate reform recently came a long way, which is great, um, which was well overdue. We did um, have some wins last year for rate reform. But yes, I think that more people should know. And um, yeah, well, I don't even like to talk about the pandemic anymore. Um, I think along the lines, we all thought we would hear stories about the pandemic and you think, well, that's who I feel the sorriest for that's why that's what makes me the saddest but then for me it was the group homes um because you don't know until you know you know we all saw the pictures of people at the glass like waving to people um but that was that was what was happening in the group home, group home it's a it's a setting that could not have visitors um so that was sad and i think that it became a little bit part of people's consciousness then that that these are these are staff 24 hours a day uh, we have seven group homes 24 hours a day and overnight shifts and um they're running you know they're running a household and they're running a family and um but i think that people people are starting to to understand and you know when we're at special olympics people are like applauding our efforts so i feel like i feel like we're we're 
we're making our way. People are starting to learn. Yeah. I think people yeah. definitely just should be more aware of this. I know I'm trying to be, and I think that you, you know, there's so many aspects to the sector that are just sure. kind of taken for granted. And there's a lot and, of people working like in the community that you wouldn't even know are disabled that have, you know, full-time or part-time jobs. And they're just part of, you know, society and uh, maybe they're Trudeau clients, maybe they're not, you know, maybe they're. Yes. Uh, yes. That's what also, I sorry. love to, um, I love to frequent establishments that hire people with disabilities. Um, Donald works at EB. He goes yeah, in with yeah. a crew every day. Yeah, I do, yeah. And do you like your job? Oh, yeah, I do. They love, he yeah, loves his job. The, it's been over a decade, right? You've been there? Uh, right. 10 years. 10 years. So wow. Yeah. It's consistent. Yeah. And There's great. little little spots all around Rhode Island that are, you know, companies that are doing the right thing and hiring people with disabilities. And um, Donald is, you wait for his party on Friday. Yeah. So many people have RSVP'd from EB. Oh, yeah, yeah. So many. Yeah. Are you looking forward to it? Donnie, you're looking forward to Friday night, the release party? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. He's been talking about what he's going to wear for a while. Do you know yet? Oh, <laughs> such an it's an important part. You know, you got you got the. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's, it's it's some people would argue it's as important as the music. You know what I mean? The yeah, image, yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. So yeah, we're doing great things here. Great things. I mean, our our school for autistic kids um, pathways is a whole other story. You know, there's so many stories. It's hard to to fill it into a sentence. But um, you know, just just out there supporting people and doing it as nicely and professionally as he possible. has a YouTube page with the record oh, yeah, where you can yeah, listen yeah. to it and have some of the artwork on it. And um, my wife she went to RISD for a little bit she helped she always helps with my project so she helped kind of put the artwork together and um oh, yeah, you know yeah. for the album cover and whatnot in the back yeah I'm, I'm looking at it right now it's really it's super cool. cool it's really exciting um so it's this Friday March 31st 6 to 9 right. p.m at the Trudeau Center which is at 345 3445 that's yeah. 3445 Post Road in Warwick um, yeah. in the recreation building before we sign off you know I, I, I how's this experience of making this record changed or, or I, I let me actually rephrase that because what does this talk how, how does this experience Ian define the power of the creative arts as a way for us to communicate with each other what have you learned about that that broad sort of um, um, I mean, you know, um, I just think, yeah, music, music is a language that's universal. Um, and I think when you, when you make something original, I mean, it doesn't have to be original, but when you make something original and you create something out of nothing and you put yourself out there, you can really connect with people on another level besides just the mundane, not, not that regular life is bad. But this is like a special kind of bridge. It's a special tier, um, I think, art, art, uh, being an artist. And, um, you know, so for Donnie to create this, you know, this masterpiece, create this record um, that he can share with people and share with maybe other people with disabilities and beyond from other states and whatnot, um, I think it just bridges the gap, you know, for, um, you know, for whatever you think your limit is, it's probably not your limit. And you can push, you can push past it. And I think art is a great tool for that. Um, I'm trying to think of better words. Uh, That's no, pretty that, good. That was good. That was, that was, yeah. And I, you know, I want, I, I had the idea. I was like, you know, if we put this out there, there's a really good chance. Maybe a local newspaper will cover it. Maybe. And I just wanted it. I just wanted to just put it out there for him um, and let him just, yeah. you know, receive, you know, Right. Bask, bask in the the work he's done. Right. It's great work, and it's it's all. If, if he sold this record on the side, I would. I told him it's like now you're an entrepreneur. Now you have this job for a decade at EB. But then yeah. if you sell this record and you even sell it to just your friends and family, now you've created a side business. Now you you know you're a 
Yes, you know, he's you have learning. An independent business of sorts. Exactly, Donald's learning so much um, oh, yeah. from oh, yeah. the process. Oh yeah, I know how to create debt as an artist, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Well, and Donald I, had a Donald had a dream, right? Like that's it's as simple as that. Donald dream Donald had a dream yeah. to yeah. be a rock star of sorts, right? Oh, yeah. That's so now somebody's got to get this record in front of Drake <laughs> or somebody. Get the record <laughs> in front of Drake or somebody in the industry. So if he's listening now, we uh, yeah. yeah, make sure you you advance this thing. Ian, yeah. Kathleen, Donnie, hey, amazing work. It's a special, special project, and and you all deserve a lot of credit for it in a way that I don't think most people understand because it's a it's a really beautiful effort. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, passion over profit. You know, that's, yep. that's what it's about. No, I don't know. Good. You've been hearing me talk a lot about the University of Rhode Island's online cannabis certificate program. And with the legalization of recreational cannabis that went into effect last year, well, cannabis can open up doors for your career. Whether you're already in the industry or just wondering what is a pathway to break into the field, the University of Rhode Island has that program to help you become highly competitive in numerous areas of the cannabis industry. Fully accredited by URI's College of Pharmacy, the certificate program is 100% online and it can be completed in just two semesters. The next application deadline for the summer 2023 session is April 4th, coming right up. And courses start on May 9th. Learn more at uri.edu slash online slash cannabis or give them a call at 401-874-5280. At HealthSource RI for Employers, we provide access to health insurance to more than 1,100 local businesses and nonprofits, and 96% of them renew through us every year. Maybe it's our choice of 19 different health plans, our 10 years of customizing solutions, or our one local team of dedicated experts helping employers find quality health insurance. See how our numbers stack up for you. Learn more at healthsourceri.com/employers.